have had opportunities to cheat for pretty much my entire marriage. The healthiest way to have a good marriage is to have opportunity, but she gives you no reason, and so she takes care of you. Now, there's a lot of other guys who are in the same boat, right? They are with a woman who takes care of them, even though they have the opportunity to cheat. Those guys, the women that they're with, realize that that guy is the kind of guy that other men want to be and other women want to be. And so as there's that hindbrain realization of that prompts behavior on the part of that woman to say, you know what, he's a good dog, but I got to pet him to keep him on the porch. Well, parents today say they're more worried about their sons becoming successful adults than their daughters. So what's troubling young men today? Now, I brought together some people who presume to know about this because they spent time looking into it. You've been listening so far. What do you have to add to the conversation before I ask you any specific questions? Anytime a man tries to interpret a woman, it's embarrassing. And anytime we try to interpret a man, it's embarrassing. Like we need to stay in our lane a little bit more. When I hear a man telling me what I want as a woman, there's just some misconceptions being thrown about as though the generalities are true. And we're missing a huge component of relationships that's a really important one, and that's intimacy. We're talking all about prestige, and relationships have two components at their very base, intimacy and prestige. And every relationship at its core is a mix of the two. Even take the super old rich guy and the super young hot girl, there is a component of intimacy to their relationship that works for them. In addition to the prestige that comes with his success and his monetary gain and her beautiful body and her youth. And so I feel like we're missing it and we're doing a disservice to both genders. And the other thing is it always feels like a gender battle. Like it's always men versus women. And even at home, I cannot talk about this with my own husband. I cannot talk about men's rights with him. I want to kill him in about 30 seconds. And I'm like, I'm on your team. Like, I represent dudes and I hate you. And I'm never extreme enough for him. And he likes to spew facts at me. Like, men are always guilty when the police come. I'm like, what? Who? Have you been arrested? I, last time I checked, you've never even been investigated. What do, you, what do you mean this always happens? He's like, you know it's true. It's a fact. I'm like, oh my God, it's a fact again. And I do know it's true. I actually watch my poor male clients get arrested for ridiculous stuff all day. I can give you 100 case studies that would break your heart. But when he says that, I want to deck him. And why? Why does it have to be that way? Why can't I just calm down and listen and not be in competition? And I can't. I fail, at least at home. I'll try to do better for you, doctor. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Tell me if you're going to deck me right before you do it, right? <laughs> now, Richard, what do you think about Andrew Tate? Well. <laughs> First of all, everybody has heard of Andrew Tate, uh, certainly everybody who's under the age of 40. He had 12 billion views on TikTok. He was searched four times as much as recession, uh, for example, and so people know who he is. And I think I was actually listening to, to Ben earlier, and I have three, three sons in their 20s as well. I gotta tell you, the paternal instinct in me was coming out very, very strongly listening to you. Uh, I really felt where you were coming from but I also think the fact we're having this conversation this way tells us what a horrible mess we've got ourselves into. It is quite true that we don't have a positive vision of masculinity that we're passing on, but it has to be one that is compatible with equality between men and women. We need a positive script that we can give to our boys, and I've tried to raise my sons this way, but not one that in any way makes seem women seem lesser. We don't have to make women seem less for men to be more. And that's right. And, and, and some, of, some of what you say, some of what you say has some real truth to it. There are some biological differences between us, but they're not determinative. They don't determine your role. You say the biological role. Women, women are designed to bear children. Well, duh. I think most women know that they bear children, but that doesn't mean that that's their destiny. That's an idea we left behind in the 19th century. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.